I'm Dr. Edna Mutua. I'm a social scientist uh, working at the Kemri Welcome Trust in Nairobi, Kenya. Uh, my area of research um, is on antimicrobial resistance. Essentially, when we see antimicrobial resistance, we're looking at a status where uh, bugs that used to respond to medicine are no longer doing that and making infections difficult to treat. So for this interview, I'll talk to us about two projects on antimicrobial resistance that I'm currently working on. So the first one uh, focuses on antimicrobial resistance surveillance. So how we're doing this project is um, a patient who is eligible for a blood culture when they present to a health facility that does not have capacity for doing such tests, has their sample taken, and then the sample is ferried to a high capacity laboratory that can process uh, the samples and do the analysis, and then the results are fed back uh, to the health facility uh, for patient management. We are piloting this approach because we'd like to see the feasibility, uh, its feasibility in the Kenyan context. We'd like to understand in practical terms what does it mean to run such an approach? What are the handoffs that you're likely to experience and how should you mitigate them? And this is useful for helping to plan if this is an approach that should be taken to scale. Yeah, so this body of work has benefits in two ways. So the first way is, and the most immediate way is, um, when you give the feedback to the hospitals about the results, the, the sample that was taken, the doctor can be able to use that as to inform the treatment plan. But when it comes to policy, once we are able to know what bugs are circulating, then we can be able to plan better for what medicines we should be having in our health facilities. And we should also be in a position to determine whether the mitigation strategies we have for antimicrobial resistance are actually working or we need to improve or we need to think in different ways. So the benefit this project had for the patients that we interacted with was that the results uh, once relayed to the clinicians uh, were used to determine their treatment plans. And uh, at policy level, this type of work is useful because it informs one, the kind of bugs that are circulating and it puts us in a place where we can be able to determine if the mitigation measures we have are adequate or not. In health facilities, it can help us uh, identify whether we have the right medicines for the kind of medical challenges that we're facing and therefore being able to prepare well. It matters because um, antimicrobial resistance can be expensive. It can be expensive in the sense that it can cost lives. It can be expensive in the sense that it can result in long hospital stays for patients and of course lowering the quality of life. And it is expensive in the sense that once you have somebody who stayed too long in hospitals, it means also that people have to sacrifice livelihood activities for caregiving and therefore worsening the outcomes for families. My vision for the future is to see a world where we are able to mitigate antimic antimicrobial resistance in an equitable and in a just way so that we don't cause harms as we try to contain AMR and we don't weaken our health systems um, as we try to also mitigate AMR. So for mitigation to be just, it means that um, we're looking at both the positive and the negative consequences that could emerge by implementing a certain measure and asking ourselves how can we maximize the gain while we are lowering the pain or the harm that comes out of it.